Good morning, everybody. So I just had a brief power outage. Hopefully this goes well as my first stream. We'll be reading Hank the Cow Dog, Faded Love by John R. Erickson. And fun fact about John R. Erickson, he was actually a goodness to gracious cowboy from Texas. He grew up and while on the ranches, he was um, inspired to write the Hank the Cow Dog series. So this is the book we'll be reading. And there are quite a few books in the Hank the Cow Dog series. I grew up reading these and I hope that you guys will enjoy it. I found these very fun. Chapter one, the case of the giant rattlesnake. It's me again, Hank the cow dog. It was your normal average run of the mill spring afternoon on the ranch until Drover brought the news that Sally Mae's baby was being attacked by a giant rattlesnake. And suddenly, it became unnormal, unaverage, and definitely unrun of the mill. I was up by the chicken house, as I recall, taking testimony from J.T. Cluck, the head rooster. He had reported strange sounds in the night. I had gone up to check, up, check it out. All right, J.T., start at the beginning and tell me the whole story. You want the whole story? He had a speech impediment, whatever you call it. When a guy whistles all his S's. Speech impediment. That's correct. And remember, tiny details are often the most important. And try not to whistle. All right, Hank. This thing has me worried. Elsa says I worry too much. Only last week, she told me. Wait a minute. Is that the beginning? He stared at me and blinked his eyes. Oh, you want me to start at the beginning, you say? Let's try it that way. Oh, okay. He rolled his right wing around in his socket. I took careful note of the movement, knowing that it might turn out to be an important clue. Turn the wings, Bank gave me the fitch. Hold up. Was it bothering you before you heard the strange noise in the night or after? Huh? What are you talking about? Strange noise in the night. Oh, that. No, no, has nothing to do with it. This sore ring's been coming on for six months. Maybe a year. Elpha says, let's just get on with the story. Okay, okay, here we go. He closed his eyes and concentrated. Then the eyes popped open. He glanced over his shoulder, leaned towards me and whispered. You know what bothers me most about this whole darned thing? What? What bothers me most about this whole thing is the way these darned kids act. If you ask me, we've raised up a whole generation of ungrateful chickens that don't know matters. And you want to know what else I think? No. His beak froze open. Huh? No, I didn't come up here for your latest sermon. Just give me the facts about a strange noise in the night. Oh, well, I was a getting to it, but yeah. We definitely had a strange noise in the night. Very strange, Hank. It must have been close to dark, see? And we'd gone to roost, and the chicken house got real quiet and still. All right, go on. And you see them two little roosters over there? I looked to the right and saw them. I memorized their confirmation. Actually, they looked every, they looked every bit like every other young rooster I'd ever seen. Two wings. Two legs, two feet, a lot of feathers, and a stupid expression. Yeah, I see him. Go on. Them's the laziest two boys that ever walked on this earth, and you know what else? They're my boys. Now, how do you explain something like that? I was having a little trouble trying this all together. What do these boys have to do with the strange noise? I'm a getting there. I remember waking up from a light sleep and saying to Elsa, Elsa! Did you hear a strange noise? And Elsa, she said she described it as peculiar, not strange. Hmm. So we agreed, me and Elsa, that it was somewhere between strange and peculiar. Very good. Now you've just got to concentrate. Do you have any idea what might have caused that kind of particular noise? Again, he looked around to see if anyone was listening. Then he leaned forward. I've got a darn good idea. 
But first, I need to know if you're the kind that's going to blab this all over the ranch. I didn't become head of ranch security by blabbing. Okay, I just wanted to hear you say that before I gave you any more information. Go on, JT. It's safe with me. Okay, I'll have to trust you. It was them two boys of mine. They'd been out playing around, see, and thought they could sneak back in while the old man was asleep. I glared at him. Wait a minute. I came up here to solve a mystery. Where is it? Well, it's a mystery to me why their mother lets them boys get by with that kind of nonsense, and you always struck me as the kind of dog who cared about others and their problems. And it was kind of quiet this morning, and I said to Elsa, I put my nose in his face and growled. You're wasting my valuable time, and I don't like that. His beak dropped open. Well, there's no need to be tacky about it. I'd, if you just want to know what I'll think. At that very moment, Drover came streaking up the hills, scattering hens and pellets in all directions. You should have seen the feathers fly. Oh, JT heard the commotion and started squawking. Help! Help! It's a wolf! Run for your life! That was the last I saw of JT Cluck that day, which was just fine with me. There are very few things I hate worse than being suckered by a dumb chicken. Drover arrived in a nervous spasm and a cloud of dust. Oh, oh, Hank, can't come quick. You won't believe. Oh, my gosh, it's awful. Help, act, attack the baby. Save him. Oh, Hank, it's all up. Hank, it's all up to you. Ordinarily, I would have told my assistant to calm down and give me the facts so I could build my case. I mean, there's such a thing as blind panic, and in this business, you learn that blind panic is a poor place to start. On the other hand, when duty calls, a loyal cow dog must respond. I mean, answering the call of duty is just by George bred into us. Did I stand around gathering facts, building my case, taking descriptions of suspects? Did I waste my time asking Drover who was attacking, what, where, when, and why? No, sir. I lit, I lit like a shuck and went streaking down the hill towards the gas tank, scattering chickens left and right. Out of the way, you fools! You should have heard the squawking. What dumb birds. I reached the gas tank in a matter of seconds, stopped, set up a forward position, and waited for the enemy to show himself. He didn't appear. So I started barking. Hank! Drover was standing at the top of the hill in front of the house, yelling, You went the wrong way! Up here! It appeared that I had... Drover's directions had been very vague. How was I supposed to... Ugh, I shot back up the hill. All right, where is he? Give me a coordinate. Left! I went streaking off to the left and heard Drover's voice again. Hank! Not your left, my left! I screeched to a halt, spun around, and sprinted back to Drover. You're going to have to work on your navigation, son. This is unacceptable. I'm sorry, Hank, but I thought... Never mind what you thought. Which way's the enemy? In the yard. But, sh but you'll have to jump the fence. In spite of the dangerousness and seriousness and emergency-ness of the situation, I couldn't help smiling. That fence means nothing to me, son. It's just one of my life's many hurdles. Really? I don't think I can. I don't think I can jump it. That's fine. Watch me and study your lessons. Okay, Hank, I'll work on it later. You bet you will, on your own time. Here I go. I got a run and virtually flew over that fence. A deer couldn't have done it better. I landed in the yard, went into my fighting crouch, set up a forward position, sniffed the air, and scouted the terrain. The yard was forbidden territory. You might say. Sally Mae had planted grass and shrubs and flowers and other stuff, and iron law number one on the ranch was that dogs were not allowed inside the fence. Cats were. You could usually find Pete the barn cat lolling around the back porch, waiting for a handout, never mind the rest. It makes me mad just thinking about the injustice of it all. Cats? Over dogs? Anyway, once inside forbidden territory, I scouted the terrain. Some 30 feet in front of me, I saw little Alfred. Sally Mae and High Loper's baby boy. He was wearing a sailor suit and playing with a dump truck. 
A short distance from little Alfred, perched upon a cardboard box, was a large cake with white icing and two yellow candles. The clues were fitting together. Baby, clean clothes, cake, candles. This was some kind of ceremony. An ordinary job, an ordinary dog untrained in security work would have leaped to the conclusion that this was a birthday party. But drawing on my years of experience, I didn't like to make that kind of assumption. The fact said ceremony of some kind, not necessarily a birthday party. Two questions remained unanswered. First, where was the child's mother? And second, what monster or evil force had put little Alfred's life in danger? Those were the crucial questions of the case. And you'll notice that I had arrived at them only minutes after the first alarm. My next course of action was to search for some answers. And I suspected Drover knew them. All right, that's the first chapter. And I'll get this uploaded so I can get chapter two started. All right, see you guys in just a bit.